Thanks, Courtney. A stunning case to tell you about. It comes out of Texas. It involves a man in his 70s who allegedly shot and killed two people he believed were burglarizing his neighbor's home. The neighbor, Joe Horn, actually called 911 before the shooting. The dispatcher tried to talk him out of going outside to confront them. Take a listen. He's coming out the window right now. i got to go, buddy. I'm hey, sorry, but he's coming no, out the window. Don't. Don't go out the door. Mr. Horn. Mr. Horn. They, they just stole something. I'm going out the window. Don't, I'm sorry. I ain't going to let them get, get away with this Go stole something. Outside. They got a bag of something. I'm okay. doing it. No. You're dead. <laughs> Wow. Horn reportedly told the dispatcher that he understands his rights and he even made reference to homeowners having some protection from prosecution should they choose to confront somebody breaking into their home, but is protecting a neighbor's home the same thing. Here now, our legal panel, defense attorney Nicole DeBoard and former prosecutor John Richardson. John, would you prosecute this guy uh, and say, okay, there might be a castle doctrine uh, in Texas, a fairly recent uh, law there, but wouldn't your castle? No, you definitely prosecute this guy to the full extent of law. This guy played neighborhood sheriff, judge, jury, and executioner. It's 2007, and even in Texas, you can't grab your gun like Jed Clampett and go out and hunting for the bad guys. And that's what he did. He went out hunting. What we didn't hear on part of the tape was mm -hmm. the dispatch said, don't go out there, you're going to get shot. His answer, you want to bet? I'm going to kill them. Um, that's a big difference between defense yeah. and actively hunting somebody. All right, Nicole, be before I go to you, just uh, you know, in, in fairness to Joe Horn, there there is a statement from him, uh, you know, after this whole incident. Any loss of life uh, casts permanent devastation over the loves of everyone, uh, lives uh, of everybody involved. I would think that's what he meant. The events of the day will lay heavily on me for the rest of my life. Now, let's say Nicole, his neighbor, had said to him, "Hey, Joe." Uh, I'm going to be away a little bit. Uh, could you look at my house? Does the neighbor's house then become Joe's castle? It really does. And that's what happened in this case is the neighbor said, will you watch my house? And so for all intents and purposes, this house belonged to Mr. Horn and he was acting to protect it. And when these people came out into the front yard, he basically was confronted. He was out in a front yard where he was legally allowed to be. These gentlemen came toward him, one of these parolees who was burglarizing a home with a crowbar. What do you think that they were going to do with this 70-year-old grandpa when they got close enough to him to get to him? Right. I don't think that he had well, any choice. But in whatsoever. fairness, and John, back to you, well, presumably who, they didn't who? know that they had a record. John, what about that, though? If the neighbor said, you're watching my house, then does that legally become Joe Horn's castle to protect? No. What if, what if, he, what if the neighbor told four neighbors to watch my house, and they all come out this, outside the house, guns blazing? Remember. This is the middle of the day. It's a neighborhood, a place where kids play, a place where grandmothers walk their dog, a place where mothers walk their strollers and their babies. No, this is not self-defense. This is a guy who actually went outside and he went hunting. Uh, he didn't stop to, say, to find out if, for example, this was uh, his neighbor's grandchildren who broke in to let the cat or feed the cat. Mm -hmm. He and had no clue it, it, what was going on. Let me go back to Nicole for he a second. He just came out blazing. That is, Nicole. You don't break into a house with a crowbar and through a window to feed the cat. There was no question. This right. man knew his neighbors. His neighbors asked him to watch the house. And these men were coming toward him when he had to make the decision about whether or not his safety was in, in uh, jeopardy. And he made the decision, decision to shoot. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. You, that, that's, right, that's right. I want to go to John right. first on this one. Does, in a neighborhood of children, a here at when, all? when you... In a neighborhood, that's exactly what you should do. In a neighborhood of children, if somebody doesn't identify themselves when you have your gun, you should go ahead and shoot Wally and Beaver Cleaver uh, when they don't identify who they are. 
I'm We're sorry. Not there the are story explanations. Here. These men broke into the house with a crowbar, and everybody is clear on that fact. There is no question whatsoever that these men broke into that house with a crowbar, and this gentleman was simply doing what he could to defend himself at that point. This they gentleman the to be was in that yard endangering the lives of the of kids man. in that neighborhood. What about, and what he about was his reckless, age? I want to get an answer from both of you on that kill. before I let you get away. John, what about his age? Does that make any difference? The guy's a senior citizen, 72 years old. He might have said, geez, you know, I, I'm an old man. I was, I was afraid. I, 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 he said he had no choice. Listen to the tape. Absolutely not. He says, I'm going to kill them. He, he says, bang, you're dead. And then he shoots the gun and we hear the gun. This he guy says, move was and you're a dead. hunter. And they moved. All right. John Richardson, Nicole DeBoer, good debate, interesting case. Thank you very much.